When Formula One's 2022 technical regulations are discussed, the phrase clean sheet of paper is invariably used, and for good reason. But just because the carryover from the 2021 cars to next year is extremely limited, it doesn't mean that the Formula One teams really are starting from scratch. So how big a challenge is it for a team to design a 2022 car, and what exactly does transfer from the current cars to the very different ones that will hit the track next year? Let us know in the comments which team you think is best placed to make the most of the new rules, and which could slide down the order next season. The 2022 technical regulations herald a dramatic transformation for every aspect of Formula One cars outside of the power units, the architecture of which will remain fundamentally the same until the next generation engines are introduced in 2026. This means the whole aerodynamic concept of the car is transformed. The addition of two Venturi tunnels, one on each side of the car, means the return of full-on ground effect aerodynamics for the first time since 1982, although it's important to note that ground effect has been utilised in a more modest way in the interim. Along with simplified swoopy wings, with the rear wing in particular so tightly regulated that the design will be close to identical from car to car, the primary objective is to improve what's called the raceability of the cars. By reducing and redirecting the turbulence behind the car, the objective is to mitigate the downforce lost by a chasing car, therefore making it easy to get close to and overtake a rival. There are also changes to the wheels, with 18-inch wheel rims introduced, the return of wheel covers, which are a standard supply part for the first time since 2009, and the addition of a vane that covers part of the front wheels. In addition, there's also the introduction of more common parts under the skin, as part of the moves to keep spending under control in the cost cap era. The bodywork is simplified, with the complicated extended bargeboard areas that have become de rigueur recently eliminated entirely, and with an even greater bias towards underfloor aero thanks to the ground effect Venturi tunnels, that means a fundamental change to the way that the downforce is produced and controlled. F1 has already revealed its vision of the 2022 cars, which you can find out more about in a video we released earlier this year. But despite the most prescriptive regulations in F1's history, there is plenty of scope for teams to stamp their own mark on the car. And based on paddock whispers, when the real cars break cover early next year, there's plenty of different interpretations and details that teams will have adopted. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for the body's big three odour zones. You can stay in race trim with the all-in-one performance package 4.0, featuring the Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer. This is Manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body. Manscaped will keep you inside track limits from head to toe with their Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, plus Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. For a limited time, you can get all of this, plus two free gifts, 20% off, and free shipping, simply by going to manscaped.com today and using the promo code THERACE at the checkout. Manscaped. Always use the right tools for the job. An F1 car comprises anything from 5,000 to 25,000 parts, depending on who you ask and how exactly you count them. Even for so dramatic a change as the 2022 rules, some of those parts can be directly transferred. Think of the endless electrical systems and hydraulic systems, as well as little heralded components like the fuel pickup and the fire extinguisher bottle. Provided they still fit in the available space, they transfer either with no change or minimal adaptation. For the most part though, this applies to the smaller mechanical parts and systems that are vital to making the car work, but not necessarily significant performance differentiators. There are also standard supply components, 23 in the latest technical regulations, that must be identical from car to car. Many other parts won't transfer without at least some modification. In the case of the major assemblies that comprise the car, these are all set to change completely and this will have a profound impact on the aerodynamic and mechanical performance of the car. 
but McLaren technical director James Key recently stated that the most significant carryover is one that isn't often spoken about. Specifically, it's what he calls the knowledge of what you believe makes a car go quick. That might sound like stating the obvious, but what can be termed the underlying science used to produce a 2021 car and a 2022 machine are fundamentally the same. So what exactly is the knowledge that we're talking about? Really, it's a shorthand for the combined skill and expertise of the team. Most importantly, this is understanding the best way to achieve their objectives with the car, which, as the race's technical expert Gary Anderson explains, is always fundamentally the same. Let's look at a specific example. In recent years, sealing the underfloor of the car to ensure the low pressure underneath is maximised to increase downforce has been vitally important. This is achieved by generating airflow and vortices that do this virtually, given doing so with bodywork is not legal. It's what you might call a virtual skirt. This will remain vital next year, but the aerodynamic tools available to the teams are completely different. So they know the characteristics required, and they have some understanding of how to use the vortices to achieve this. But with barge boards eliminated, the front wing changed, so the powerful Y250 vortices, generated 250mm either side of the centre of the front wing, are no longer available. In fact, all of what Key describes as the philosophies and beliefs underpinning the car design are transferable. This includes the dynamics of the car, characteristics such as how to achieve good braking stability, the consistency of the downforce levels, creating and controlling the energetic vortices that are key to aerodynamics. Tricks such as outwash aero, which the 2022 regulations are designed to eliminate completely, won't be completely forgotten, as historically such ideas usually find some way to manifest themselves. Exhaust blown aero is a classic example of this, given that even with a decade of moves to cut that out completely, it is still a small factor. What Key basically means is that the teams have theoretical knowledge of how to achieve many of their objectives, but for 2022 have to build up different real-world knowledge to make it work for the new rules. On top of that, teams won't have a chance to test the correlation of their real-world cars to the various simulation tools until the cars run in reality next year. This is one area where teams do risk tripping themselves up. There have been times in the past when rule changes have exposed some gaps in understanding and knowledge that are trivial for one rule set, but significant for another. As recently as 2019, Red Bull struggled initially when the seemingly minor front wing changes and took longer to readapt than some of its rivals. To take another Red Bull example, when the exhaust position was changed in 2012 to curb exhaust blown aero, it exposed some of the aero shortcomings at the rear of the car that were irrelevant given the exhaust blown downforce. These subtleties are where the teams are truly heading into the unknown. The combination of completely new technical regulations, the cost cap that was introduced this year, and the fact F1's latest Concord agreement means the way the share of F1's revenue is split between the teams is more equitable, means 2022 does represent a more level playing field than in the past. But it's all relative, and there are still baked-in inequalities that will take time to balance up. After all, the knowledge we're talking about is the result of years of experimentation and experience, not to mention the creation and refinement of all sorts of tools. Therefore, money spent by the big teams, but not by the smaller ones historically, will continue to have a benefit. There are also other factors at play, such as the fact that the aerodynamic and CFD testing work in 2021 was reduced the higher up the championship a team was. For the first six months of 2021, this was based on the 2020 Constructors Championship, with the order changed for the final six months of this year based on the point standings after the Styrian Grand Prix. This should have a larger effect in the future, as the 2.5% increments between teams doubles to 5% next year. Combined with measures such as the cost cap, this should over time make for a more even playing field. But it will be the knowledge base of each team that will be the key, with next year's rule changes offering both an opportunity to take a step forward and a stern test of the underlying science they apply to their cars. After all, every team has their own car concept, and what they will have learned in recent years to build up their knowledge base will vary. A team like McLaren has been very aggressive in experimenting with new concepts to attempt to build up that knowledge base. 
Aston Martin, meanwhile, once ran a high-rate car concept prior to switching to a Mercedes clone for the past two seasons. So how that team starts next year will be a fascinating test of whether it has actually learned more by mastering very different car concepts, or if its underlying science is limited thanks to basically copying the Mercedes design without necessarily fully understanding it. Every team has its own story that will feed into the cars that will hit the track in 2022. What's beyond question is that there will be winners and losers, because there always are. Let us know in the comments which teams you expect to take a step forward next year and who risks tumbling down the order. And if you enjoyed this look ahead to F1 2022, make sure you like and subscribe.